Sanderson, who's going to lay out. What a grab Did there. he catch that? You know what? They called it a catch. That's all that matters in the ball game. <laughs> it's a catch. It's a big first down. Then Tyler Spencer rumbling through that defense of East Chambers, still grinding. They get the push. You know what? That offensive line play looking solid early on. Coach Wagner told me they'd be good. It's 14 to nothing at this point. Then how about Bryson to Sanderson? And look at him go. Judge Sanderson, be proud because your boy has got himself another big touchdown there. And, yeah, that was over 50 yards. East Chambers trying to get something going here. And it's Jacoby Peralt to Darius Green. Big first down, but they didn't get any points out of it. In fact, they got no points tonight. Your final from the Rice Bowl, Hampshire Finette. They roll in this one. The final was 41 to nothing. And uh, Coach Wagner, you can come <laughs> after me now. <laughs> because this is two years in a row I picked against y'all in the Rice Bowl, and you just, you just, I think you like embarrassing me. Oh, I don't think so. I think um, we, uh, if it keeps working this way, uh, we need you to pick against us, right? right. It's good luck for us. Uh, we we're very fortunate to, to win this game tonight. Um, our kids got after it, and you always picking us to lose is motivation, so keep it coming. All right. On that note, Cam, just you a can. hard fought, <laughs> hard fought loss in week one against Lumberton. You know, you only lose by a score. You come out here and you blow them out 41 to nothing. How does that feel? It feels fantastic. Uh, you know, we played a really good Lumberton football team uh, last week. It was it's week one of the season and you, you want to face a tough opponent. And gosh, we got one and we, we had a real barn burner. It was still tied with like five minutes to go. And uh, we felt like we could really improve from the, what, the performance we had. We thought our tackling was not good and our angles were bad. And uh, we were out to prove it. And we had a, a really good week of practice. Well, let's just put it this way. It was a hard week. Uh, they had to show up and tackle. It was a physical practice. And uh, we showed up tonight, and we tackled well, as you could tell. Of course, you know, defense pitches a shutout. But us media folks, we like to talk about the offense. And sure. I talk about the weapons you got there. Bryson and Zeno both getting time at quarterback and both making that offense move. I mean, how great is that to have a two-headed monster that can really do it all? You know, some schools are – they're trying to find a quarterback, and we got two. So we're blessed. Two talented individuals, and when you're at a school our size, a lot of our kids play both ways. And so having the two quarterbacks because of Dante playing uh, secondary, and then Ty playing receiver, so having the two when they're tired and cramping, it's it's uh, it's a blessing. Coach, moving on from here, you gonna keep it rolling? Oh, we're gonna keep it rolling. Okay. Guaranteed, yeah. When you win the Rice Bowl like we did tonight, I think we got a pretty good football team because East Chambers, that's a good football team. They just happen to be on the short end of the stick. That's not reflective of how good of a program they've had and, and do have. So that's a, that's a good football team. We got a good football team. Before I let you go, though, I got to ask you, have you ever wrestled a gator before or do you own a gator? Because <laughs> there was a gator that showed up here today, and I don't know if you know anything about it. I don't know anything about it, I, <laughs> but I did hear about it, and I, and I think it's great for you guys, right? Right. It makes uh, people cover it, and it gives you a good story, right? And there was some good alligator sausage in, in the visiting uh, concession stand tonight. But we're used to those gators over there. I mean, if we have any kind of carnival at our place, we have pools full of gators that people can play with. So got we're it. used to them. Bring them on. I love it. Congratulations, Thanks, Coach. Guys. We appreciate Congrats, it. Coach. Great job. Oh, Hampshire Finette job. winning the 49th meeting of the Rice Bowl, 41 to nothing. Let's keep that highlight machine rolling and talk about the PNG Indians. Last week had a rough time in our game of the week. Yeah, they were and, looking to uh, bounce trying to back. Bounce back tonight. Yeah, definitely trying to bounce back. They're going against Beaumont United. First play here is Cole Crippen under center, getting out wide to his receiver, Julian Lopez. He's able to pick up a nice gain down inside Beaumont United territory. And coming up next, give it to the running back. It's Shea Adams stuffing it right up the middle. He's good for six. And the Indians strike first. Like you said, Ash, tough first week against Port Arthur. They're looking to bounce back. Now we go on offense for Beaumont United. It's Jonathan Martin. He's rushing, getting down there. Short of the first down, so that's going to bring up fourth. They do have to punt, which means it would be PNG back on offense. Crippen under center, dropping back in the shotgun. He's looking downfield. He's going to air this one out. Who's going to make a play for the ball? It is Beaumont United coming down with it, and that's Javarius Phoenix making the big play there to get his team the ball back. But back on offense go the Indians again. It's Shea Adams, the running back, right up the middle in for six more. It was 21 to nothing at the half. The Indians were all over Beaumont United in this one, and it didn't change in the second. Yeah, it's one of those things when, when Shea Adams comes in, he's been coming out of the Wildcat. He's more, one of the physical quarterbacks. He's also quarterback there. And, man, 49 to nothing. Yeah. They hand it to Beaumont United, and this is where it's the head scratcher. Who is PNG? Right. The team that lost 
50 to yeah. 15 at home or the team that just put it on Belmont United. And that's what's so fun about early on, especially non-district football games is it's going to change a lot week to week. You want to be clicking on all cylinders by the time you hit district play. And week one to week two might be the biggest difference you're going to see in all these teams. It's a chance to really go back to practice like Coach Wagner just said, see what you got, and then change it for week two, and that's what they did. One team that was looking to get back on the winning side after starting out the year 0-1, the Westbrook Bruins. They actually played last night right there at BISD Memorial Stadium, taking on a Manville team that has just been a powerful side since the beginning of time and early on here Mavericks with the ball Cameron Dodd with a big time stop there for the brook later on though Caden Smith is going to get this into the end zone touchdown Mavericks as they took the seven nothing lead over Westbrook more from Manville Smith keeper and, and just somehow finds his way down the sideline and he's he's going to get in the end zone it was a score it was 14 nothing there yes Pylon is in bounds there. Nice play there for the Mavericks as they extend the lead. And look at that, Darius oh. Simeon. The offensive player usually doesn't lay down the wood, but uh, it definitely did happen there. More from the Brook as they keep things moving, trying to get into the end zone. And that's going to be Terrell Smith, the third with the first down. Then Simeon, he's going to take it in for the score. It was 27-7 to at that point. Westbrook made it a game in the second half. As we go to the final last night, Manville beating the Westbrook Bruins. Your final was 41 to 27. All right, putting up a good fight there if you're Westbrook. We're keeping the highlight machine going here. It's going to be Nederland and Port Arthur Memorial up next. We saw what Port Arthur did in week one. Talked about it, the blowout win over the Indians. See what they can do here in week two. Back on their home field. First play of the game, Wilson pitching it out to Jacorian Baker. He's getting upfield inside the 10. Now Wilson on the next play says, you know what? I don't need the running back on this one. I'm going to keep it myself. Drops back, little quarterback draw right up the middle, untouched into the end zone to get Port Arthur on the board first. Man, the athlete of the week there, Davian Wilson. Now we're switching sides. It's Adam Trosclair looking downfield. He's got Jake Havard running underneath the ball, and the Bulldogs have nothing but daylight ahead of him. Almost drops the ball there, but luckily no one around. He's in there for six. He got where he needed to go. He got he where he needed happen. to go. That is right. On offense again are the Bulldogs getting down towards the enemy team's territory. Finally going to get tackled there, and we go back to Port Arthur one more time on offense. Davian Wilson, the highlight machine. He's going to let this one air out this time. Downfield, a nice bullet that finds Caleb Goody, and we've heard about him, that transfer from Louisiana. That's right, Bro Bridge area. And, uh, you know, last week he probably could have had a pair of touchdowns, but he just got tripped up there by the turf. Got himself on the board there. And at the half, it was 21 all. So Bulldogs putting up a good fight in this game. But as we go to the final, 42 to 21, Port Arthur takes it. It definitely says a lot about Nederland. Of course, yes, Titan Tempo keeps rolling. They move on there. But for Nederland to come back after being shut out by West Orange Stark to put up 21 points, had a good first half. But Port Arthur just hit the gas there in the second half after that. You know, standing by there, though, at Memorial Stadium, Port Arthur is our very own Sapphire Cervantes. And uh, she was there to see it all and just uh, Sapphire. Tight tempo, uh, tempo just keeps on rolling on. You know, and it was a home game this time, so it was super exciting. I'm here with head coach Brian Morgan. I mean, 2-0 and oh on the season so far. It has to be a good feeling, especially next week. You're back home against Porter. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to be 2-0. Oh. We didn't play very good in that first half, but um, it's a good result, and kids played hard, so it's good, you know, good to see. And you guys forced, I think I counted right, it's 7 I think so. It was it seven. I think it was seven. Y'all yeah. had seven interceptions today. Yeah. I mean, so what does that say about your defense and just the pressure that they put on? I think number three, he had two in there. He so had three. just he, yeah. had three, he had three, three 20, actually in there. Twenty-two had three, and then twenty-one had one. Um, but all all those guys in the secondary really have good ball skills, and you know we see it every day in practice. But uh, on a week to week basis, I think if you throw the ball, you know, they got a really good chance to catch it themselves. And so it was good to see, and just helps the team out. And at half, you just saw the guys, they were not happy with how things were going. They wanted to be up way more, and you could hear it as they were headed to that locker room, and especially from Wilson, your QB. So just his attitude and how he takes you know, care of the team and brings that leadership. How, where do you project him taking this team now from now on? You know, he, he's, a, he's a competitor. Um, you know, he, he got hit around the first half and was really kind of banged up at half, but the first half wasn't like we played football. You, you know, we, we didn't capitalize on some turnovers, and our defense gave up three big plays, which is not something that they do. Um, we got a really good defense, and so it just wasn't um, the standard we play at, and we just kind of talked about the half. Everybody was calm and in control. They understood where we were in the game and played well in the second half. 
Well, Coach, again, congratulations. Really exciting. You'll be back home next week, so we'll see where the Titans take you. But I think we have to say happy belated birthday. Appreciate and we are too. certainly glad you're feeling better. And now yes. you can actually celebrate with a win. Absolutely. So we'll let you go before hopefully it you know, starts <laughs> raining. We right. don't know. It's been lightning and thundering this whole time. But thank you so much for staying out here. Yeah. Um, until next time, out in Port Arthur, I'm Sapphire Cervantes for 409 Sports Blitz. Appreciate that, Sapphire. You know, another big game going out in Sealsby. Brand new turf. They're dedicating the field tonight. Tigers taking on Huffman Hargrave, and that is Mason Brisbane finding Draylon Miller, and he's got himself a oh. big first down. He just keeps going. First and goal, Tigers. Then J. Ron Williams. He's going to take it from there, and he's got himself a touchdown. Somehow buries his way in through that defense of Huffman there for the score. Now it's Radrion ball trip as the Sealsby crowd gets into this one. Rain jackets up there a little north. We were lucky here on the coast. Look at ball trip go. Speeding away from the defenders for another Sealsby touchdown. This team, I'm telling you, speed. They have tons of speed and they got tons of talent. They definitely can do some big things, but they're not done. Not yet. How about Williams again from Sealsby? And he's gonna have himself Another touchdown, and Tigers win big again. They blew out Vider last week. And as we go to the big board, they roll in this one, knocking off Huffman 48 to 14. So 2 0 for Sealsby out of the gates, and they really they haven't been challenged yet. I want to see this team in person really bad. You know, we're not saying we were going for game of the week, but we both really want to see this Sealsby team play. So maybe we check out the Tigers next week. You got Miller, and when Miller's out, you go right to Williams. This dual-headed backfield, it's it's scary, man. It definitely is scary. We're going to have to check out those Tigers real soon. But right now, it's time for our first time out of the night. And when we do that, it's time to take a look at the 409 Sports Blitz Band of the Week, the Hampshire Finette Longhorn Band. And now, the Band of the Week.
And welcome back for non sports blitz week two. We're out here in Winnie where Hampshire Finette rolls 41 to nothing in the Rice Bowl 49th meeting and it was just a blowout city one way the whole time. It definitely was and the Hampshire Finette proving that they are a really good team. You know, East Chambers, they are going to have to deal, you know, with a team possibly in the playoffs. Woodville, a former district rival. Well, now Woodville's moved north, but they played a heck of a schedule. They played Franklin last week, lost by 10. That's a defending state champion. Now, they were taking on the Newton Eagles, ranked number three in the state. And let's take you out to those highlights there in Eagle Stadium. I'm not a betting man, but I had all my money on the Eagles tonight. Who Eagles wouldn't? versus Eagles. Pick things up here. Woodfield with the ball. Ball comes loose, and Aaron Foster, he's got himself a scoop and a score. See, he's earned his stripes. That's not a bald eagle. Touchdown, Newton goes up on top. But Woodville, I'm telling you, they came to play tonight. Coach Ty Robinson said it's the time for his team to be able to beat these big schools, uh, these powerhouses, I should say. And when you got a guy like Jatavion Taylor that can break away from a secondary like Newton. Goodbye. You can do big time things. And that is a touchdown for the Woodville Eagles. We got ourselves a ball game. Newton, you knew they would fire back and they did. James Grant up there getting all the footage for us. Malik Woods, we're gonna pick up the action a little bit later on after a little celebration for the Newton Eagles. There goes Malik, and look how fast this guy is. Once he's in the secondary, you're not gonna catch him. Whew. Close ball game, Woodville led this one 15 to 14 at halftime and go to the final. We have an upset, folks. An upset. Whoa. Woodville has knocked off Newton. What a great win. For Ty Robinson's ball club, 23-22. Great job there by Woodville. Great game also by Newton. Just a good slobber knocker of a contest between those two. And James Grant, he was there up at Eagle Stadium for all this one. You know he saw a good one. I can only imagine what James has got to say about this. This is going to be good. James, take it away, sir. Hey, guys. Yeah, I hope you all are eating plenty of rice down there. I had a pretty great game tonight. Probably one of the best I've covered uh, since I've been here, Woodville taking down Newton 23-22. I'm here with Woodville head coach Ty Robinson. Coach, y'all haven't beaten Newton in 25 years. Can you just talk about what this win tonight means for your team? Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, beating the number three team in a state means something. Uh, I think this means a great deal to our community. I believe it's, you know, it's been a quarter century since, uh, since Woodville's beaten those guys. So, uh, beat, you know, the wins against Newton don't come by very easily. Uh, they have a great program, just unbelievable tradition, really one, one of the top in Texas. And, uh, you know, hats off to them. Uh, but the boys, they, uh, they hung in there, had some chances to lay down, but they didn't and uh, found a way to win in the end. You said it, Coach, and I was going to say this was a team effort for you guys tonight on both sides of the ball. But I wanted to point out your cornerback, Taiwan Miller. Uh, I know his brother's on the defensive, end, defensive line for you guys, but he had that big interception in the first half, broke up that pass at the end and really sealed the deal for you guys. How big was Taiwan for you all tonight? Well, Taiwan, his nickname's Squirrel, and he, and he moves like a squirrel. He's, he's a quick twitch little sucker and uh, probably one of the best just, just – cover corners I've ever coached in 25 years and uh, in the first half they were driving down there they were about to score and uh, they tried to fade him up they had a great receiver number 10 is a really good player and uh, Taiwan just took it away from him and then there at the end of the game on uh, on fourth down uh, you know he uh, he made the PBU pass break up that uh, that won the game uh, really proud of him um, just really proud of the whole team right now Man, it's awesome. I know I'm sure someone's buying him some Dairy Queen tonight, hopefully. But uh, y'all are building some momentum, of course, district champs last year. So best of luck to you guys the rest of the way. We appreciate your appreciate time tonight. I want to know about that alligator in East Chambers. Did, did uh, Ashley do that? They trying yeah. to get some clicks or something? Yeah, did, did, did y'all plant, <laughs> plant Big Al out there? What, what's up with that? <laughs> you know, the, the biggest story of the night's been the alligator. Yeah. I mean, no, he, he, no he, alligators up in Woodville tonight. It wasn't huh? us. We did not do No, we just got mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, just mosquitoes. Yeah. That's under, yeah, I mean, there was My no mosquitoes out here tonight, but, you know, yeah, no alligator. We're all safe. We're all safe right now, so that that's good to know. <laughs> thank you, James. There you go. All right, moving on. You well, know, we, you. we had uh, some other uh, big games going on tonight, and, you know, Buna and Bridge City. Yeah. You know, Cardinals playing on that beautiful Ooh, new field out there. Look at that new field starting things off. It's a sack for Buna. Franklin Renfro getting in the backfield. You're right, Ashley. There's some nice color to that field out there. The it just turf. Pops. It, it does just pops. pops. Now, Bridge City on offense. See what they can do on their new turf. 
Bearden going downfield to Gavin Bowden. That's a nice pickup right there. Move the sticks. Bands loving it. Keep things rolling. Bridge City on offense again. This time they're going to the other Bearden. This is the running back, J.S. Bearden, getting through the center of the line there and diving in for the score. Bridge City, the Cardinals, they're on the board. And PAT, Victor Hernandez looking good on it. Nice leg. Bridge City still on offense. Familiar name here, J.S. Bearden again in the goal, in the red zone, I should say, diving in for six more. Padding the stats there for Bearden, and Victor Hernandez is good again on the PAT. We're going to check out the form here. Yeah, that's good. Oh, wow. That's plenty good. That's plenty good. Nice every, good point was, kick. every point was important in this game. Absolutely. As we go to the final here to take a look at the score, Bridge City on their new turf, they take the dub. 23 to 20. Like I said, every one of those extra points were needed tonight. Big win by the Cardinals, and now they get ready to battle LCM next week. Ooh. Definitely going to be a tough one there. How about we go out to another team that has beautiful new turf? Harden Jefferson. This is our third game featuring brand new turf. Harden Jefferson hosting Anawak and. Uh, Oh, there's a little rain out there tonight. Luckily, we've missed out on the rain so far, knock on wood. Coach Greg Nese and his team's coming out looking like stormtroopers, white head to toe, and here they go. Brady Barrier, the freshman, finds Landon Corbett, and he's got himself a big first down. They would settle for a field goal. How about a Logan Trotter to Roderick Russell? It's actually Harden Jefferson, I should say, that settled for a field goal. Penalty at the end. Hawks here with the kick. It's up, and it is Good. Big night for the kickers. Hey, kickers are people too. We keep trying to tell people. <laughs> How about Barrier again? He's a freshman. Fun and Talon Cunningham. He's inside the 30 for a nice first down. Now, Barrier going to go to Quadre Coates, and he's behind the defender for the touchdown. 12 to 3 Panthers at this point. Harden Jefferson looking a whole lot like Ole Miss, by the way. Bad snap, though. It's going the other way. Presley Mouton scoop and score. The defenders have been on fire tonight, too. 19 to 3 at this point. How about Landon Corbett? This guy did it all for them last Beast. year. And now he's coming out of the backfield. And good luck stopping him. It's 25 to 3 at this point. And Anawak, they roll over Harden Jefferson. Your score 57 to 18. So you think that's a lot of points, right? Right. You think you would think. You think that's a lot of points. But <laughs> hey, guess what? Cam got to go to six man football tonight. My first taste of six man football. Let's roll on over to High Island. Took the quick trip to the island. They were taking on Second Baptist University model. And man, is six man football a lot of fun. Start things off here at Second Baptist. Little lateral plays not dead. Getting to the outside down towards the goal line. Going to get tripped up. That's going to put it into crunch time, one yard here to go. Number 12 extending it. Referee's there, did he get it? Yes, he did. That's six points for Second Baptist to start. And now we go over to High Island. It's Curtis Ellis faking the pass, getting past the first line of defense, turning it to the sideline. Big fella can chug. He's there for six, High Island on the board, and then they're kicking it off, Second Baptist. Not a lot of players out there, so there's room to run. Gets to the outside and turning on the Jets. He could go Oh, the Way and he does. And he did. He, he did. certainly did. Kickoff return there. Just putting the points on the board. Second Baptist again. A little screen pass. Number 12. He's getting to the outside. Tough to bring him down. Stiff arm. Still on his feet. Is he going to make it? Hop, skip, and a jump. He's good for six more. Referee there to put the arms up. And you just wouldn't believe this score unless we confirmed it for you. It is accurate. The final. Nin <laughs> Let's go to it, folks. 96 <laughs> points for High Island. 72 for second Baptist. I told you it's basketball on grass. 168 points. I'm glad you did your math. You were working on that. Uh, I, I used my calculator. <laughs> I used a calculator. High Island almost hits the century mark of the win. Congratulations to the wow. Cardinals on their big victory tonight. Now, last night, the Orange Bowl taking place in Bridge City. It was a little weird. You know, the first game on that new turf for a varsity team was actually West Orange and LCM. It wasn't even Bridge City. But it was a good one last night. Great crowd on hand. Damarion Morse, he's going to get the scoring going here, coming right to your living room for the touchdown as LCM took the 7-0 lead. But West Orange Stark, you knew they would fire back, and they would. Keyshawn Robinson looking, looking, looking all the time. He's going to keep this one himself for the touchdown. West Orange Stark does not kick at all this year. They go for two. It was good. It was eight to seven. Nick two. Morris is going to come back for the touchdown. So extra points good. It's 14 to eight at this point. LCM, they were starting to feel it. 
Dean Reynolds taking the handoff, floating it out to Jacob Pollock, and it was 20 to 8. LCM looking for the first win over West Orange since 1994, but it was 20 to 16 at this point. After an LCM fumble, Dustin Helm took it in 24 20, West Orange start, and they knocked off LCM last night. What a classic, though! 38 to 32. Unbelievable football game. Great game last night. You know, it was a shame it had to be on a Thursday night. But uh, Batlin Bear Stadium, by the way, nearly complete. They got the turf going down. More new turf in the 409. <laughs> How about we take a look at some out-of-town scores right now? There was plenty of other games being played around the 409, and we're going to start off up in Jasper, where the Bulldogs were leading big late over Palestine, 40 to 28. That's the hometown of Whiskey Myers, one of my favorite bands, by the way. There you go. And also Santa Fe, they knock off Vider in there in Pirate Stadium, 34 to 22. Couple other scores to take a look at here. We got Lumberton after their win, week one win over Hampshire Finette. They take the loss to St. Thomas, 42 to 24. Then Brazos, 34 nothing over the Lions in Coons. That's right, Brazos. We're gonna hear from Texas. Brazos. We gotta teach you that one. Brazos. Brazos. 34 Brazos. nothing. Other scores keep on moving ahead as we can look at some more. Die Ball beats Kirbyville, 33 to 24, and uh, Legacy Sports Science knocks off Orangefield, 40 to 30. More scores. Harden, 13 to 6 over Evadale. That was at halftime the last week. Oh, all there. right, all right. So who knows how that, those couple games ended there. Hold they said had the 12 6 lead over Warren. And yes, Kip East End loses last night 50 to 6 to Coleman Hill. Mount Enterprise falls to the West Harden Oilers 40 to 14. Cushing, they knock off Deweyville tonight 34 12. Kelly, they were hanging with St. Pius. Oh. 37-14, Bulldogs get the L in that one. Man, still got some more scores. Burkeville, nothing. 67 points for Union Hill. No score coming in on Chester. I'll have to check with their coach tomorrow to find out how those Yellow Jackets did. They got off to All a good right. start last week. Legacy Christian, though, with the big win, 48-21. to And that's going to bring us to our next timeout. When we come back, we're going to recap the game of the week real quick. Right now, after the break, week two, four non sports Eventually. blitz. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. You don't want to miss these highlights coming up after a little time out here. And welcome back to the 409 Sports Blitz. Let's take a look at those highlights from our game of the week. Let's get right into it. It was Hampshire Finette East Chambers, the 49th meeting of the Rice Bowl. 
And yes, these two longtime rivals, the biggest talk since this morning was about a gator found on the field here in Winnie. <laughs> Everybody's wondering where it came was from. Was it a plant? It wasn't us, but we know it was not a stuffed gator because it scared one of the East Chambers coaches when he was trying to unlock the gate. Pick things up here, Buccaneers. They're going to cough it up, the fumble to start the ball game, and that's never a good way to start because later on, on fourth and goal from the 11-yard line, Ty Bronson, he's going to find Deontay Zeno for the score. It was 7 to nothing at this point. More from Zeno, this time to John Sanderson. It was maybe a catch, maybe not, but you know what? It counts as wow. a catch. The athleticism counts. The catch is counted by the referee, so we're going to take it. And the final in this one, Hampshire Finette, they would roll over East Chambers. Your final was 41 to nothing. No doubt about it. No doubt. No doubt in that one. All the rice going home with the Longhorns. Well, this rice might go home with me. I mean, gumbo season's coming up. Yeah, you got plenty of rice. Plenty of Ten rice pounds of rice right there. Yeah, that's a really big bag. Yeah, All really right. big bag. How about really big hits? I like that. Let's roll it on into the hit of the week. The hit of the week brought to you by Campbell Portable Buildings. And this one's a little of a test. Were you watching at the beginning of the show? Were you paying attention? Because it's Darius Simeon coming up the middle for the Westbrook Bruins. The running back with the hit of the week tonight, lowering the shoulder as he comes through the gap. Oh, my goodness, run over like an 18-wheeler. Big hit there from Darius Simeon for our hit of the week. And welcome back to the 409 Sports Blitz. We keep rolling on with something that we like to call What You Eating? Well, guys, we made it to week two of high school football. This week, I'm at Nederland at Port Arthur. So we're back in the PA checking out that Titan Tempo and what fuels the Titan Tempo. And I'm here with Miss Renee Broussard and Chris, who's been here. He's been here for six years, Renee. 32 working these concession stands out in Port Arthur, fueling all these fans. So tell me tonight, what's your top item on the menu and what is everyone eating out there? So the signature item that everybody really seems to like from uh, year to year is uh, the smoked DJ's boudin. That's uh, what I would say is a delicatessen for the uh, patrons for the football game. And obviously the smoked boudin is the favorite uh, on the menu, and so that Titan Tempo going to be smoking the Needle and Bulldogs tonight? Uh, I would say so, yeah, you know, uh, but 
uh, here in Southeast Texas, you know, is uh, Boudin is uh, again a delicatessen in this area, especially from DJs right there in Beaumont. So, uh, you know, a lot of ch my childhood pastime is firing up the grill and putting on some Boudin. <laughs> so, you know, what better way to watch the football game than eat a piece of Boudin? Y'all should be jealous because this is going to be gone. Before halftime. But you heard them before halftime, but that's all we have here for what you're eating. Enjoy the rest of the 409 Blitz. I'm Sapphire Cervantes out here with the Tiny Tempo in Port Arthur. Appreciate it, Sapphire, and we never get any of that food. Man, some boudin sounds good right now. It sounds really good right now. You know what <laughs> also sounds right, uh, good right now? How about the play of the week? The play of the week. Brought to you by Five Point Credit Union. And the play of the week is going to come from the game of the week. How about Ty Bryson over the top to Justin Sanderson. Look at the athleticism. It is called a catch. Huge first down for Sanderson laying out. Congratulations. That's the 409 Sports Blitz play of the week. And welcome back to the 409 Sports Blitz. We are wrapping things up. Week two, hard to believe, in the books as we're looking ahead to week three. Really good week. A lot of teams bouncing back after week one to pick up their first win. It really is. And you mentioned it earlier. Couldn't have said it better myself. You see that biggest improvement from week one to week two. Week one, you got a lot of penalties, a lot of mistakes, turnovers. Week two, you start kind of pick up Shaking on the who's who in the 409. Yeah. Let's take a look at next week's games. We uh, got a few big contests coming up next week. We're still going to be deciding on our game of the week. P&G, uh, they got a big win tonight, but they're going after an undefeated West Orange Stark team. That's going to be really tough. That's You talk about a big decision maker, a big challenger. That's going to be a big one. That's right. And also, Nederland, they looked much better tonight losing to that Titan tempo, but they'll be taking on Draylon Miller and the Silsby Tigers in a uh, We've been peeping that one a little bit yeah. on the uh, schedule. I wouldn't want to be the Bulldogs in that one. That's going to be a tough matchup. Let's see what else we got coming up next week. Little Cypress, Mauriceville, and Bridge City. That could be a pretty good game. LCM that, you coming know, off Over a loss. the years, LCM and Bridge City, they really did have some great rivalry matchups. Uh, right now, though, LCM's rolling. But Bridge City, they got a good win over Buna tonight. Won a, a tight one, 23-20. East Chambers. You know they're going to be coming back swinging next week. They travel right down the road to Harden Jefferson, the Hawks. 0-2 right now under Coach Zach Bass. It's only a matter of time before they get things going, though. Going to have to have a big week of practice if you're East Chambers. Didn't get any points tonight. They're going to look to change that next week. You got Coots and Evadale next week. Also Jasper and Newton. 
Yeah, good and, matchups. you know, Jasper and Newton, there are two communities that are really kind of like on islands by themselves up there in the very northern part of our viewing area. And they've had some history before. In fact, if you drive through downtown Newton, there there's a mural painted there. And there's two football teams, and one is in purple and white, and the other one's in the colors of crimson and white, like the Jasper Bulldogs. So Ooh. there's a lot of history between those two over the years. It's great to see them starting to play each other again. But, uh, you know, first of all, thank you, Patrick Vaughn, before we yeah. say goodnight. You said we'd be fine <laughs> on the coast. We did not have any rain, just a drizzle a little bit earlier, and we've had a nice breeze all night. I did see some lightning in the distance, so uh, we're definitely going to get packed up and try to get out of here really soon. We got lucky tonight. It feels we, like it. We got lucky, and uh, that's two for two so far that hasn't been ruined by Keep weather. Keep it going, Patrick. Keep up the great work, Patrick Vaughn. We give you a hard time all the time. And you are going to keep an eye on when we're going to be announcing our game of the week. That's going to be coming up on Monday. Sapphire Cervantes will be in for me. I'll be out of the country for a little bit. Oh, all right. I'll be back. I'll be back He'll by be next back. week. Don't worry. But uh, definitely going to be a good game next week. She'll be announcing it on Monday night. But for now, it's time to say good night here in Winnie, the 409 Sports Blitz. Until next week, we'll see you. And now, the Band of the Week.